Hi, I'm Alison from Little Toy Tribe and I'm going to be giving you a little bit of a rundown about open-ended toys, how they can be used, what they actually are, um, and also some of our favorites um, that we sell uh, at our shop and that we have personally owned for many, many years. Um, so my girls are now uh, six and four. Um, and we've been using these resources since they were babies um, and still to this day. Uh, we often love to incorporate things uh, with recycled items to keep playing new again, uh, but those open-ended toys are the things that are going to continue lasting for many, many years to come. So firstly, I'm going to get started with what open-ended play is. So basically, open-ended play means that there is no right or wrong way to play with a toy. Um, that item has no fixed way or use. Um, and basically, it's up to a child's imagination as to decide how it is used. Um, so here I've got just one of the arches of the Grimm's Rainbow. And I'm just going to give you a few examples as to why this would be considered open-ended. So we can have it sitting on the ground and wobble it back and forth. We could turn it over and we could roll um, some cards over the top of it or balls. Um, and then we could also stack them all on top of each other. We could use it as a phone. Um, that's just a few ways, um, but obviously there are so many more and that is why it is considered an open-ended toy. Um, so something like an animal, so this is a cow, a child is going to look at that and think, oh, it's a cow, or use it as a cow. So this is an example of a toy that would be considered closed. Um, if we, for example, use like a graph pattern in here that's got no face, no facial expression, no features um, to say whether it's a male or a female, um, that is open-ended. Um, so if you can see the differences of why a child would associate that to being one thing um, as to why this would be considered open-ended, that's why it can be used in so many ways because we're really just leaving it up to a child's imagination. Now it's all well and good to leave this up to a child's imagination as to how playing with these open-ended toys, um, but not all kids are used to this. So you can still introduce open-ended play, whether your child is one, two, three, five, you name it. Um, the things that I would recommend doing is either setting up invitations to play or sitting down and actually playing with your children because you can give them some ideas um, as to how they can play with those resources and they will do the same to you. Um, so a little example that I've got for you is we bought these little Lucite cubes um, about a year ago now. Uh, and I sat down with them and started stacking with them in the sun and looking at the refractions and everything and they were beautiful. Um, and that's what I was thinking of doing with them. Uh, but the girls actually took these and decided to start making a jelly shop. Um, so they have been well loved in our home for like over a year now and they continue to come back to that jelly shop. Um, and it's so good for their learning. Um, obviously when you're like role playing, you're talking about numbers, counting, um, you're sharing, so you're cooperating with each other. Um, there's so many different ways. Um, but that was not something that I ever thought of because I'd never even really thought about jelly. We don't eat it a lot. Um, so yeah, your kids can give you ideas and you can give the same to them. Now talking about setting up an invitation to play as well, what I would recommend um, is basically just gathering a few resources. Um, so here I've got a hundreds board, but you don't obviously need that, and some pom-poms and togs. Um, so this has been a favorite since my girls were about 18 months or two, um, and they have always loved color matching. So you can give them a little tub of pom-poms and some tongs and just set it out on the table or on the floor for them to discover um, and sit down. So my invitations, to play are never really fancy. Um, they just take me about a minute or two to actually set them up. Um, and any play that I get beyond the amount of time that it took me to set it up, I count as a win, um, whether that be independent play or me sitting alongside them and playing as well. Um, the other thing that we need to remember is that independent play um, isn't you know, easy for every child and it is something that it takes a lot of time to develop. Um, you can also be sitting next to them and reading a book and that's still classed as independent play even if you're right there. Um, yeah, it's just that your child is not expecting you to actually interact with them back and forth. Um, so often I'll give my, my kids a little invitation to play uh, when they come home from school or something and they just need a little reset. Um, and you know, they don't want to think about what they're going to take off the shelf and what they're going to create. Um, and I don't force that upon them. I just have it set up on the ground or on the table um, and they can come along and play with it or they can choose to do something else. Now, I know some people can be hesitant in spending money on open-ended toys um, because there can be a higher price tag uh, than buying some things from Kmart that are cheaper. But with your open-ended toys, you're going to invest in one item that's going to last you all the way through by changing the ways that they're going to be used. Um, and I'm going to give you some examples of that after. Um, in regards to buying something from Kmart, you might buy a $30 item three times, three $30 items. But 
what you're not going to do is get that play out of them for years to come because kids often grow out of the phase that that toy fulfills. Um, so if you had spent $90 on the graphite Nims Rings and Coins, say, um, my girls have been playing with that from birth all the way still. Um, my eldest is six and we are still playing with that set. Um, so that $90 has gone over six years rather than fulfilling something for a couple of months. So open-ended toys also don't need to be expensive. You can use things like paper towel rolls and tissue boxes, um, and they are still considered open-ended because there is no right or wrong way to play with them. A few ideas with the paper towel roll is that you could balance balls on top of them. You could also post um, nins or loose parts through them. Um, so basically your paper towel roll is going to uh, break after a few uses, but those open-ended toys there uh, that you have invested in are going to last for so many years that you could pass them down to your grandkids. Um, so we love to use the combination of recycled items in with open-ended toys because what you can do is actually create experiences um, with those toys rather than buying, you know, like the little... Um, letterbox from like Kmart that you post the letters into and it has lights and it you know moves and sings and everything as they post those letters in. So you're fulfilling that uh, schema of that child's play um, that they are wanting to post those items over and over again. But you can do the same thing with the tissue box. Um, so here's some of the graphite coins and you can put them in the same way that you would be putting them into um, that letterbox from Kmart, but you haven't had to purchase a whole new item for $30. You've just got a recycled tissue box and you're still using those graphite coins. Don't think about it as being a lot of money up front. Think of it also as an investment that you're not going to continually purchase items when you can just change the way that they use them. Um, so for example, uh, this here is a play silk. And on there, I have got some graphite coins. So that makes a really nice noise. I used to hang that um, from my kids' uh, play gym and they used to bat that um, when they were little. You can also tie that up and you can use it as a teether as well. Um, so there's so many different ways that you can use those same resources and make the toys new. Now, that recycle play is awesome with all of your open-ended toys. There are so many of these things that can also be replicated in the nice quality versions of um, toys as well. So this here is the Totley box and it is a great um, object permanence box and it is one of my favorite baby play items because so many of those recycle play elements are incorporated into this box and it is really nice, um, good quality and aesthetically pleasing as well. So remember as well that when we first started open-ended play, um, all of our toys were in our living room um, so it, it was a nice a lot nicer to sit down and look at something that was a well-made toy than it was to look at all of the egg cartons and tissue boxes and things like that but they do serve the purpose so open-ended toys don't need to be expensive um, but they are definitely reasons that they can come in handy this can be passed down for many many children as well um, whereas your recycled tissue boxes and paper towel rolls um, milk bottles all those kinds of things um, you're going to just have a few uses out of them before you recycle them totally box um, incorporates so many of those elements. There's different places um, that you can post things, um, which is something uh, that a lot of young toddlers um, go through as well. And then you can get them back out um, there as well. So they're also learning object permanence. Um, so if you're looking for a great piece um, for your child or baby, um, to start with, this one's great from about seven, eight months old. Um, they can start to get some of those concepts and it would still keep going all the way up. Um, we don't have one of these at home at the moment because my girls are older, uh, but we did go to play at my friend's house and uh, she had one. And uh, Big Sis, who is six, um, decided to stick a whirly squig onto the top and spin it and was playing with it like it was a helicopter um, and then opening it up and putting the people inside there as a house as well. Um, so again, you can see how a child's imagination can make most things open-ended. Now, another thing to remember is that open-ended toys can also be used in combination with other things um, like some favorite figurines. Um, my girls really love Bluey. And the thing that you can do with them is you can make all different kinds of houses and things like that with them. Uh, for the people, you could make school, you could make the cafe. Um, so those open-ended toys are a great base if your kids have an interest in some figurines and things like that. It doesn't matter that they're not all open-ended toys. You can definitely incorporate all of those things together and that's the beauty of them. Now I'm gonna give you a little rundown of our top five open-ended toys. These are our favorites from babies all the way through to big kids as well. The first is the one that I actually first started uh, with my open-ended toy purchase, which was the Graphite Nins Rings and Coins. Um, so here I've got them just tied onto a play silk, um, so which is great as a little grass bar or hung from their baby play gym. 
Um, the other thing is the coins and then the little nins as well. Um, we often use the nins for posting when they were little as well, and they're now used a lot in small world play. Um, the coins, they love to stack them up, use them as currency in their shop. Um, the rings, obviously, are for threading, and you can do lots of pattern making and things like that as well, and making mandalas. Um, so that's a, a great set that will continue to get used for many, many years to come. Number two is play silks. I've got one tied there onto the ring um, and another one here. So you can put them into tissue boxes and pull them out. Uh, you can play peekaboo with them. They're great for dancing. Uh, you can tie them into a little doll carrier, lay them down on the floor. You can use them as grass or water um, in small world play. Um, so yeah, again, a lot of ways that those can be used. Um, number three is balls. So I've got a wooden ball there. I've also got some pom-poms, which are great in combination uh, with tongs for some fine motor work, um, color matching and things like that as well. Um, your wooden balls are great for rolling around um, the floor and you can also um, incorporate them into things um, like stacking bowls and things like that when they're little and those stacking bowls can be used um, again later when they're older. Mine still use them in cooking and sensory play and things like that as well. Um, the next one is blocks. Um, so babies will love to stack them up and knock them down. So that's a great cause and effect um, activity. And then you can also, um, you know, they'll build castles and things like that when they're bigger. Um, and those blocks uh, will not disappoint. They will last for so many years that you can pass them down to your grandkids. The next one um, is kinetic tiles. So magnetic tiles are great because you can build all different things with them. Um, so you can make houses, uh, garages, um, you can build really, really high uh, bull runs and things like that. There's so many ways um, that you can use those kinetics. The other thing that we love to do is write on them um, with chalk markers. Um, so you can make little sums and, you know, simple CVC words and things like that um, as kids get older. So there are uh, so many ways that you can play with magnetic tiles. Um, they are one that I would highly recommend. Now that's the end of my top five open-ended toy recommendations, but obviously there are so many more. Uh, those are just my top picks and my absolute favorites. On the next slide, I'm just going to put a little uh, slideshow to show you how those toys can be used from babies all the way through to big kids um, that I can't quite show you on video. Um, so keep watching uh, there. And if you have any questions at all, please do uh, just reach out by Instagram or email. We're more than happy to help uh, pick some resources for your little ones. So here's a little look at our top five open-ended toys. These we personally own stock and we just get the most use out of these open-ended toys. Uh, so they would be the grappa, nins, rings and coins, play silks, blocks, magnetic tiles, balls and stacking bowls, um, as well as pom-poms in there as well. The first is the Grappat Nins, Rings and Coins I'm going to talk about. This was our first open-ended toy purchase when my eldest was 15 months old. She's six this year and we still play with this same set of loose parts pretty much every day. These sets are so versatile, they can be used in a variety of ways for children of different ages and stages by just changing uh, the way that you set them up or present them as well. Uh, the most simple ways that they can be used is for color matching, sorting, stacking, threading, but there's so many more. Here's just a little look at some baby play ideas. Um, so you can hang them from your baby play gym for them to bat as well as learning to grasp those rings as well. We love to incorporate them with some ribbons and play silks as well to tie them into different places. And the one in the bottom right corner there is sticking them onto contact. Um, so taking them on and off as well. Uh, here's a few more. So posting, uh, babies will start to enjoy from about eight to 10 months old. Um, and you can start with a bigger hole and then slowly make that smaller uh, so that they learn to maneuver that as they start to master that skill. Uh, putting them in and out um, and making it a little bit harder or trickier as well is really well enjoyed for this age group. Some toddler play ideas in our muffin tin. Uh, the sound of the metal with the wood um, is really nice and you can do some color matching in there um, as well. There's lots of DIY play ideas. You can see on the bottom left, that is just some baby wipe lids that have been colored um, and then putting them onto mug trees as well. So you're going horizontal instead of vertical. Uh, for older kids, they'll enjoy stacking them. Uh, you can do some pattern making. Um, mine really love to make mandalas and you can thread them onto uh, the play silks and take them off again as well. And also just remember that the older children will also enjoy some of those younger ones. Um, every time we get out the recycled items, my kids still go for um, posting and putting things in and out, um, even though they're older. 
The next one is play silk. So you saw a couple ideas over there. There's so many things that you can do with them. Um, we've owned ours for many, many years and they are without a doubt used daily as well. Um, I grew our collection by starting with a couple of silks. Um, we started with like blues and greens that could be used as like uh, water and grass and small world play, but also for lots of the other ideas that I'm about to show you. Um, so here's some ideas. You can thread them through washing baskets, playing the classic peekaboo, again, hanging from your play gym, pulling them out of a tissue box, um, as well as, you know, you could just cut a hole in anything. And mine also love doing it in bottles as well and twisting the lid on and off. Um, for older kids, you can make necklaces, tie them into baby carriers, um, dress ups as capes and running around, uh, picnic blanket as well. And also, as I mentioned, small world play as well. They love to use them as grass in their farms and things like that. Um, having a good block set is such a great investment. As children grow, they are so open-ended. Uh, children can start by stacking just a few blocks and knocking them over, learning about their cause and effect and also balance and patience as well. As children grow older, they're sure to be used to stack towers and as loose parts, but also in small world play, such as making houses, steps, fences for animals and imaginary play as well. Uh, here's a little look at some block play um, that we've done over the years. So obviously starting with some simple kind of stacking and knocking down um, and also some invitations to play as well. You can see the blocks there in that metal bowl. Um, that's a little invitation to play that they love the sound of the blocks on that. They also turn the blocks, uh, the sorry, the bowl over and stack the blocks on top of those as well. Um, and then, yeah, there's so many different shapes and things like that as well. Um, on the top left, you can also so see that's like a hotel um, that my eldest made about a year or so ago um, and yeah so they can really be incorporated into so many uh, different things so it's not just stacking. Here's a little look at some of our favorite block sets. There's so many to choose from. There's no wrong set to start with. However, I do recommend starting with some more simple shapes such as cubes for the younger children. It's a good place to start because you can add other shapes later on if you feel like you wanna add a variety of shapes like triangles um, or semicircles and things like that to your collection or different sizes. Uh, so starting on the left is the Grimm's Large Set Pyramid. That was our first block set um, and one that is still used um, every day here as well. The glass scaffer slats actually match really well with um, a combination of the large step pyramid, but you can also use them on your, their own. Um, my girls like to also lay them down as roads and things like that for their cars. Um, and then the Kepler actually matches really nicely with the Lucite cubes for stacking. Um, and again, you can make like uh, shapes and things like that. So mine love to lay those Kepler flat and make people and stuff with all of their loose parts. And the Lucite cubes as well, which I think I saw, showed you in my other videos, uh, we like to build with them in the sunlight, but they also use them a lot um, in, you know, small world play, like making a jelly shop and things like that. So not just for stacking. Magnetic tiles are used a daily here as well, another one. Uh, we've owned them since my eldest was about two um, and I've used them with under supervision with my youngest from about 13 months old. Now they are recommended for children from three years as they contain magnets inside them and if one was to break, we wouldn't want those swallowed. Um, so that is why they are recommended from three but if you feel comfortable using them younger under supervision, that's done at your own discretion. Um, they are used so much for building like cities and houses, um, cafes, you know, whatever their imagination um, desires, they can really make um, some patterns and shapes and stuff as well. I'll give you a little look. Here's some things um, that we've done under toddler play. So you'll find that when they start stacking, they'll like to stack them all flat um, on top of each other or flat all the way across the floor. You can also make by starting um, just a little cube and then they'll stack them up around the edges. Um, on the top right is a little coin run that we made. Um, so that puts the grappat rings or coins down it and you can make that higher as well. Um, just looking through at the different colors that they make. Um, also some color sorting there as well. Uh, two piece puzzles, uh, shape puzzles and also tracing around them as well. Mine really enjoyed. For older kids, they can obviously build tall towers on the windows and enjoy those refractions coming through the sunlight. Um, you can make patterns. Um, there's a little uh, booklet that comes in the packs to give you some inspiration. Um, and we love to use them with the chalk markers for numbers and letters and things like that um, to do some sequencing activities or making some simple CVC words like uh, cat. 
Um, here's another little look at some small world play as well as some DIY games there as well. Um, so you can get really, really creative with magnetic tiles. The last one is balls, pom-poms and stacking balls. Now these are a really great combination uh, that have been used from when my kids were babies and we still use all of these items now. Um, so they're a great loose part um, that you can use, you know, those wooden balls for rolling and stacking. They're great in combination with the stacking balls. And then we still use those stacking balls later now um, in sensory play and things like that. And also when our baby friends come to visit, obviously. Um, so pom-poms are such a versatile loose part. Um, younger kids can enjoy posting them, um, sorting the colors. You can use them for numeracy and counting um, and things like that as well. Um, they're great for fine motor work um, with some tongs as well. So there's a little look at some ideas. The wooden and felt balls. Now the wooden balls are great for rolling, posting and things like that, but we obviously wouldn't want to be throwing them around the room. So that's why I recommend the felt balls for this because it's a safe way to practice throwing and catching. We also love to tie them inside a play silk um, so that it sort of goes across the room and then has a little sky tail at the end of it for a bit of extra fun. Like I said before as well, those stacking balls are perfect for nesting inside each other as well as stacking on top of each other. We use them a lot in some dry sensory play as well. So with rice, chickpeas, um, sand, all of those kinds of things as well. So that's a really great one that can be used from babies all the way up to big kids as well. I hope that that's given you a really good idea of some of our favorite open-ended toys and resources and all of our open-ended play as well. If you would like to read any more, we have a whole heap of blogs over on our website um, and you're more than welcome to send an email or an Instagram message as well.